Hi guys, this week on 100 Days to Zero Waste, we had a challenge from artist Lucia Monge to think globally about the ways in which we produce waste, just by buying products. Jen and Jesse stepped up to the plate, so let's see how they did. Hi, I'm Lucia Monge and I am an artist and I also teach and work at the Nature Lab Berizzi. And um, I have a challenge that I have put on myself and that I've also asked my students to do in the past and that is to find an object in, the, um, in a place, just pick up an object from the landscape and research what are the materials that are used to make this object. So I've done it myself too to replace some of the materials that I use as a sculptor so that um, I'm working with biomaterials so that when I get rid of my sculptures or have to recycle them, they go easier into um, a natural system. So, my challenge to you today is to find, pick an object and research all the materials and the processes that are used for that object to exist in its shape and form today. Good luck. Four contestants in Providence, Rhode Island, make the journey to declutter their lives and say goodbye to their trash cans. This is 100 Days to Zero Waste. Hey folks, it's Jen here, and uh, it's a beautiful sunny day in Providence. It makes a lot of sense to talk about solar energy today because at 5.30 today, I have a visitor from Tesla coming to the house. Um, I'm not allowed to film uh, our discussion, but um, we are looking at getting solar panels for our house. We were asked to take a technological product that we wanted to purchase and study it in depth, including its supply chain. So how, besides, um, how much uh, energy this saves, how much carbon dioxide it offsets if we get a nice solar system here. There's questions like, where do these panels come from? Where are they fabricated? How are the workers treated? How much does it cost to ship these, these solar panels um, to our house? And I'll be looking into all of that. I will be meeting a representative from Tesla. So they will be here to talk about what kind of solar products they have. I am not allowed to record that, um, but I will talk about it after it happened and I just wanted to let you know what's up. And I will be asking the solar rep uh, what she knows about all these supply chain questions as well. Hello, okay. Um, so this video is talking about the global supply chain and taking something in my life and looking at the, the global supply of it, where things are coming from, um, that's what a lot of industrial design is, so I was really excited about this, uh, about this challenge. And I've been wanting to buy a new pair of shoes for a really long time, and when I say new, I mean like I actually want to go to a store website and, and pick my size and buy them. Um, because a lot of the times I do, use, uh, I buy second hands, which I like to do that um, most of the time because um, I kind of get more, you know, things are cheaper, um, usually a lot of the times they're just as, as good quality, but sometimes they're a little lower. And um, there's this pair that I saw one time at a thrift store that I bought and I've loved very much, but they're sort of um, starting to get damaged, and so I decided that I wanted to source a new pair of native shoes. Okay, so these are the shoes, and as you can see, the uh, well, they're a little they're a little dirty, but I like them because they're super lightweight, um, and they're made of EVA uh, expanding foam material, and so I mean they weigh less than a pair of flip flops, even though they're full boots. Um, they have uh, this is metal here. Um, but besides that, they're all this sort of plastic material. Yeah, so, I mean, the shoes are not not sustainable, um, necessarily. Uh, actually, my roommate follows their um, Instagram, 
and saw that a few days or a few weeks ago they posted uh, a photo of one of their shoes with the caption something like, "Oh, we as a company offer sole retrimming um, and these other and this sort of process, and so we're we're eco friendly and saving the environment." Um, and then my my roommate actually messaged them directly and called them out on the fact that even though they're doing something like that that is more sustainable than not doing it, um, the shoes are themselves still non-recyclable plastic. Um, so, like, and they responded and they said, like, thanks um, for the feedback, like, we're trying our best. Um, I thought that was pretty cool that they even responded. Native Shoes Factory Tour. So we're seeing, they're making the mold, pad, computers. Check out that factory. Look at all those chisels. This guy. <laughs> oh no, that guy. Yeah, this is, this is intense. <laughs> but they're gonna weld, they're welding my shoes. Ooh, that was... Alright, I wanna see some shoes. Oh, look, look at them. Mm. Okay. They are hand trimming them. Well, there's something, there's something there. Okay, so uh, I did some research and kind of the history of native shoes is a little misleading. Um, on the website and other blogs, they kind of talk about how it's a Vancouver-based company that started in 2009, and that's partially true. Um, it's this sort of interesting model that basically uh, Chinese manufacturers overseas uh, kind of already had the you know EVA mold making process established but they had no sort of sense of design or brand and unlike um, other OEM manufacturers that just sort of offer the tools and equipment to then be approached by um, design firms in the US they kind of went the other direction and they sought out a sort of designer uh, and kind of cut out the middleman and just realized that they had the they had the process to make the shoes. Um, they just needed some designs, and so they kind of connected with this person in Vancouver who wanted to kind of just only had an idea of the shoes they wanted to make, but no sort of idea on how to make them. So together they started the brand Native. So it's really it's a Chinese company. It's kind of a Vancouver company, um, but they market it as sort of a Vancouver-based only. Um, and their thing is that they just make EVA shoes. Um, so I feel like I can't justify that material very well, but something that they do mention, um, and I think is a valid point, is they have what's called um, uh, beast, beast Free Footwear, and uh, that's their, their marketing jargon for um, basically, okay, since we're all plastic, which is bad, um, we're, we're not animal based, which is good. Um, so, you know, they don't have leather, they don't use any sort of organic material. Um, so they're even vegan certified um, by uh, PETA. And it's a little ridiculous because, I mean, it's a plastic shoe, so obviously it's, it's vegan and you're not eating it. But I don't know, there are random materials that have like gelatin that come from animal fat. So, again, I'm gonna. I want to keep looking into where EVA foam comes from. Um, EVA, by the way, is ethylene vinyl acetate, and that's what the molecule looks like. And and see if I, I, after all this research, still decide to buy a pair of new native shoes. That's it for another episode of 100 Days to Zero Waste. Thanks for joining us. Catch us next time for our final episode.